welcome to Hillbilly Herpetology. I'm Webb. Behind the camera, we got Eric. Say hi, Eric. Hi. Okay, so today we've got a very interesting video for you. Since uh, we've been on the tarantula train lately, I figured we'd go ahead and keep rolling on that. Choo choo. Uh, we got uh, the three different types of tarantulas today, and we'll talk about what I and a lot of people in the hobby consider to be a fourth, but a lot of people uh, poo poo on that. So uh, we'll talk about a, a fourth archetype. But we have arboreal, which we've actually talked a lot about arboreals on the channel, like the Carabina versicolors, uh, the, any of the Samopheus species, the Peace of Lucaria species. Um, those are all arboreal. That means that they live up off of the ground. We're going to talk about terrestrial species or tarantulas that just live on the ground. And then we're going to talk about some fossorial species that live in the ground. And while we're doing all this, I'm also going to do some rehousings or taking some tarantulas out. We have an expo coming up and there's a few of these guys that are actually going to be going to a new home, hopefully. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get them packaged up so that way they can go uh, and enjoy. All right. Here we have a Samopius Palker. Now I want to refresh this enclosure. First of all, this enclosure is a 10 gallon tank, right? So you take and you get a piece of plexiglass. You buy a little switch where it can go over the front here and some vents. And you can easily make yourself a nice big arboreal enclosure very cheap. Remember here on Hillbilly Herpetology, it does not have to be expensive. You can find ways to do things outside the box to be cheap. So when I got this girl, she was in this, okay? And I have not refreshed at all since I got her. There was a plant in here that I ended up taking out to grow bigger so that way I could uh, transplant it into other enclosures. I do want to put something else in here and that's why we're in here today. She's going to be getting bred soon. And so we're going to take our time today here and we're going to get her out of here and we're going to work on actually getting her enclosure ready so that way we can breed her. I do not want to breed her in this. I want her to be set up a lot better before we would breed her. So these things are called the Panama Blonde and you can actually see why. Like she's just a beautiful girl. Now these things are considered to be teleporters. Oh, did you see the stress uh, or the threat pose there, guys? So she's telling me right now that she's not happy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my catch cup over here and I'm going to get her caught up. We're gonna get her in another area. I'm gonna redo the enclosure and then I'm gonna show you guys how the enclosure is gonna look. All right, so. Get your catch cup and the area that you want this tarantula to go. Remember, these things are gonna go up because of the fact that they're arboreal. Now I'm just gonna touch back there. Oh, it's okay if they don't go where you want them to go right away. Just reposition, reposition. And then if I go under her and touch, she's gonna go up where I want her to go. Oh, she knew. She knew. So I'm just maintaining contact here, touching her, trying to get her to go where I want her to go. Now, will you give me that piece of cardboard, please? Oh, I don't have it. Okay, so we're just gonna do this number here. And cut. Okay, so the cameraman has generously helped me get this thing in here. Um, first time that he's ever done rehousing of any sort, so it was a fun experience. Let's just say she's a bit on the flighty side. Um, so, arboreal, arboreal. The way that you would set these up is they're going to want hides in the form of cork bark or some similar material, uh, some kind of a bark. So, she was set up over here. Well, we're just going to move things around a little bit. Maybe she won't go directly to the same thing. Oh, before I do this, I do want to put a little bit more of my signature monitor mix up in here. 
give her a little bit more dirt. It's going to help with uh, humidity and also whenever I get some live plants to put in here, it's going to help with that too now. This has leaf litter, this has sand, there's probably isopods in here and everything. Everything that you need to keep a good bioactive enclosure is in the monitor mix. And it has sand in it and all that so that way it drains well but also retains moisture. So I'm just adding some to that. Now, um, you just keep recording, I'll be right back. Whenever, push ball. Okay, so we are just wiping this up because we want it to be fresh for her. Um, I did leave some of her webbing in the new hive, so that way she can kind of fill, or in the old hive, so that way she can kind of fill at home. But then I'm also putting an additional hive in here. So that way she's got a couple of different places that she can go. We really want our tarantulas to feel comfortable when we breed them, because if they don't feel comfortable, there is the potential for them to eat their egg sacs. So you give them multiple places to hide. And as I'm making these hives, I'm just gonna put some moss behind where the hides are. And the reason I'm doing this is because these tarantulas, a lot of arboreals, but especially the, the Somopius, they like to build what is known as dirt curtains. So up above, throughout this whole area, she's gonna web it up. She's gonna pull things up with it to kind of block the area out to where she feels comfortable. So I'm just giving her some moss back there to do that because this moss will hold moisture very well. Here we have a nice big piece of cork bark that I've been waiting to use in something. And I'm just gonna do the same thing with this over here. Now my hope with the way I'm doing this enclosure is that with her having more cover in here, that perhaps she'll feel more comfortable and stay out more often. I've noticed with my regalis that she has started staying out more often. And then we're just gonna put some moss down here on the bottom for her. Not only is this gonna maintain moisture, but honestly it just looks heck of, heck of a lot better than just plain dirt. After I get the moss in here, I'll go ahead and I'll grab my leaf litter. Once again, this is just cosmetic right here. This is not a necessity, but I like the way that it looks. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this old dried sphagnum moss, and I'm just going to put this back here in between. And that is A, aesthetics. It looks pretty good back here. But B, once again, I just I want her to be able to feel comfortable. I want her to be able to grab some of that if she wants to make her dirt curtains. Now... I'm going to put a little bit of vine in here, and I didn't have this in here before, but the reason I'm doing this is because, once again, I've heard with these arboreals that are usually a bit secretive, if you give them a lot of area to where they feel like they have cover, they will come out more often, and they will run around more often. So that's what I'm trying to see here. If I put extra stuff in here, is she going to feel more comfortable? And then also, I just, like I said, I want to get it set up for breeding. So now... We have the enclosure set up. I'm going to put her water dish back in here and I'll put more water in it later. There's a little bit in there. And um, now, when you're doing the release part, it's usually typically easier than catching them in the first place. Now, you're gonna wanna be gentle doing this. You don't wanna scare her. She's still shrunk down there in her stress pose. Now, I'm going to gently take this paintbrush and just barely touch the tip of her toe. Maintaining the contact, and I'm just gonna gently move her the way that I want her to go. And she's gonna be moving up because that's usually what they do. She's kinda, she's kinda got a hold on the side, but I'm just maintaining contact, kinda pushing her the way that I want her to go. Eventually, she's just gonna do what I want her to do. She just has to feel comfortable doing it. So she's gonna reach over with her feet there. Eventually she's gonna feel something and then she'll be like, okay, I can go. And there we go.
now we're going to talk about fossorial tarantulas. So, fossorial tarantulas live in the earth, in the ground, underground. They're going to make little burrows, or some of them are, are opportunistic burrows, meaning that they'll find a burrow and they'll take that over. Um, so, when you're doing rehousings with these guys, it can be a little bit difficult because they're down in the dirt and you have to take dirt off to get to them. You obviously don't want to hurt the tarantula, but at the same time you need to get to it. Um, it can also be a little bit uh, of a feisty old world a lot of times that you're dealing with, and you don't want to put yourself in any danger while you're getting to said tarantula. Uh, that being said, we're going to be doing uh, a Megalophema robustum, or the Colombian giant red leg today. This thing is one of them that we're taking to the expo. Um, so, right here, I have a piece of cork bark. This is going to be the first thing that I just go ahead and, and lift up out of here. This can be a long process, and if it does end up being too long, we'll just go ahead and do some of it off screen. But we'll just see how far I can get here. Don't put your fingers in here if you're messing with an old world, guys. Um, so, if I'm correct... Yeah, okay. So, luckily, I have them in a clear container, and I can see where the tarantula is. So, I'm going to take my paintbrush, and I'm just going to start brushing away at the dirt. Now... Once you get closer to the tarantula, you're going to want to go a lot soft, very soft strokes. This is almost like, pretend like if you was like an archaeologist, <laughs> you know? Um, and then you can remove some of this as you go. You just want to be careful. You don't want to smush the dirt down onto the tarantula, and you don't want to injure your tarantula. So... You can remove some of the dirt as you go. And there we have it. Megalophema robustum, or the Colombian giant red leg. Now, as I said, this thing's going to be going to the expo. So, I'm going to take her, and I'm going to get her to come up into this. Maybe. <laughs> I haven't worked with her in quite some time, so I'm not sure how she's going to be. So far, she's just being a butt. She's not really showing me any threat postures. She's just being a butt about where I want her to go. Okay, so now, and there we go. Megalophema robustum, Colombian giant red leg. All right, Formictopus, species green gold. Y'all have seen her on the channel before. Let's just see if she's hungry. Usually, she is. She's like, it's too tiny. Can't fill it. She's used to eating roaches. What can I say? I guess I'll have to grab one of them so I can make it her day. <laughs> Boom! Loves it, loves it, loves it. Right. So these are the old world tarantula, or these are the new world tarantulas that are terrestrial. And there's old worlds that are terrestrial too. She's just a new world. I don't know why I mentioned that. But the whole point is, these guys live on top of the ground. 
Some of them are opportunistic burrowers, meaning if they find a burrow, they'll go in it. But for the most part, they're just right out in the open on the ground. They hunt on the ground. Um, <clears throat> the cool thing about these guys are, is because of that, they're always on display. They're always right there. You can see them, and I love that about uh, the terrestrials. But some people will say because of that that they're pet rocks, and they'll just sit there. But I like pet rocks better than pet holes, is what I always say, because that's what they call the fossorials, or pet holes, because most of the time, the ones that's living down here in the dirt, I couldn't begin to tell you how, how big they are or anything, because I only see them a couple of times a year. Uh, so that's how crazy that is. Um, but like I said, these guys just live on the ground, terrestrial species, uh, and that's more or less what we have to talk about with them. So, the other kind of tarantula that there could have been, remember I alluded to a possible fourth type, is called semi-arboreal. Now, the semi-arboreal is something that is a big source of contention because people are like, that's not a thing. And me personally, I'm like, how many things aren't things until they are a thing? You know, I mean, pretty much everything, right? So, what you would do for semi-fossorials and what species I would consider to be semi-fossorial, or I'm saying fossorial, semi-arboreal, I'm sorry, semi-arboreal, we're talking about our P. murinus or our orange baboon tarantula. So, you give them a little bit of space of dirt that they could dig down into the ground, but you also are going to put cork bark hides. So that way they have a place to hide behind, and then you're going to leave extra room up at the top more than what you usually would, so that way they can use it to web it all up. So. In essence, they are kind of living off the ground in their webbing, which theoretically makes them living semi-arboreally. They're not up in the trees, but they're not down on the ground either. And that's the thought process behind semi-arboreal. And there's not a whole lot of tarantulas that you would keep exactly like that, but the orange baboon tarantula is one of them. All right, so if you've made it this far in the video, I must say, I really do appreciate it. Um, I'm going to start learning how to do links in my videos to where I can get people to other videos of mine easy. They can go see different parts of my content. We do videos here on so much stuff. If you could just like, subscribe, comment, that help me out. And it also lets you know whenever there's going to be videos. And um, I really do appreciate everybody watching. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you here the next time on Hillbilly Herpetology.